Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj. Today we have a March Madness themed video. Again, with the madness, we've been doing more college basketball type videos. Now, this video isn't about college basketball players, it's more about college basketball teams. We're counting up the top five Kentucky players, University of Kentucky grads. Or I shouldn't say grads, I should say, you know, guys in the NBA that played for Kentucky in college. Top five. We're doing this because, well, first of all, Kentucky is really known as basically the consensus number one school that breeds NBA stars or players or whatever um not only that but Kentucky got a big win today I watched that game was fucking crazy the Kentucky Wichita State game um they got a couple guys in that roster De'Aaron Fox and uh, Malik Monk who are almost for sure gonna be top 10 picks in this year's stacked loaded draft class so without further ado let's get into this shit if you like this video don't forget to leave the like um, subscribe if you're new and comment what other top fives you want to see of college teams. What call like, you know, do you want me to cover other college teams, graduates of college teams, top five players of other colleges, like whatever, just any video you want to see, leave that down below and let's get into this. So at number five, we're going to start right off with Phoenix Suns point guard, Eric Bledsoe. Now this guy was on the team with John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins that year where they went undefeated in the season and lost. Guys, like, I don't understand how a team with those three guys doesn't win the whole thing. But, you know, when people t take a look at, you know, like, those players now, you kind of leave out Eric Bledsoe the equation. You think, okay, well, that team had Wall and Cousins on it. So, you know, they were super stacked. But Eric Bledsoe is almost star material. I I'm saying almost because I'm just not sure yet. Eric Bledsoe is putting up 21 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds. That's that's incredible. I mean, that's star numbers for sure. Um, you know, and the 43% from the field and 34% from three is, you know, that that's that's decent. Uh, he's got he has a reputation as a bulldog defensive player, even though his defense has dropped off a little bit this year. Um, the only problem with it is his team just isn't good. I don't really know where the blame for that goes. Like, you know, you could say, oh, well, like. I don't know. That's not his fault. I mean, when you take a look at the talent level on that team, and obviously we know that Eric Bledsoe, he's out for the season. He got shut down for the season so they could have the younger players play, and probably just because they want to tank and get that get as high of a pick as they can in the draft. He's probably not going to be in Phoenix next year if they draft Lonzo Ball. Um, but the thing with Eric Bledsoe is that you can't really blame him for his team, you know, being this bad, but you also have to be like, okay, well, he's the best player on this team. Sorry, Devin Booker, but Eric Bledsoe right now has been the best player on this team. Um, he's the best player on this team. He's obviously going to take off. He's obviously going to put up great stats because if you look, look who's around him, look how much he's going to get the ball on this team. So I don't know. I'm not sure if I can call him a star or not, but he's definitely number five on this list. Let's get on to number four. So at number four, we got Minnesota Timberwolves power forward or center. Carl Anthony Towns. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll say he's a center, but Cat um, coming out of Kentucky just a year, like just, what was it? A year and a half ago. This is his second year in the NBA, so we'll say it's two years ago. But Carl Anthony Towns has already bloomed into an NBA star. And look what this guy's putting up. 24 points, 12 boards. He's an absolute monster. The Timberwolves, yes, they're on the outside looking in when it comes to the playoff situation. They have enough talent on that team where they should be able to get in. But to the injury to Zach Levine, it's much harder. Also, with Andrew Wiggins just not being that good. If you just look past the scoring numbers, you can probably see that um, in terms of defense and inefficiency and getting people involved and stuff like that um carl anthony towns doesn't have nearly as much help as you guys might think he does ricky rubio is a pretty good player that that gets underrated slept under the rug a lot of the time um but other than that not a lot of guys that can really compliment carl anthony towns he puts up these monster numbers he's showing so much on both sides especially that offensive end where he's been a great great as a post presence a young guy that's super strong and built as a post presence. He's got an NBA body for sure. He can rebound the life out of the, like <laughs> this dude is, he gets after it on the glass. Um, he's just a great player, super young, future MVP. I'm saying it, guys, like this guy's gonna, this guy's big time already. And he's in his second season. Come on, man. These Kentucky, these, these guys are ridiculous. I mean, this is obviously like the best. Like you take a look at this crop of players. We have Cat at number four. Like, are you kidding me? Yes. Number three, DeMarcus Cousins, Sacramento Kings. Oh, shit. I just said <laughs> New Orleans Pelicans center. 
Damn, I'm so used to God. I'm so glad that I don't have to say that anymore. Uh, Demarcus Cousins, center for the New Orleans Pelicans. He's putting up about 27 points, 11 boards, and five assists per game this season. Incredible, incredible stats. Um, there's a reason why he's number three, though. And, you know, to me, Demarcus... He's amazing, okay? He's got so much skill. He can score on the outside, which he's discovering more. I mean, his three-point shot's been uh, not really there as much as you want it to be this year. He could definitely get inside and bully guys inside, no question about it. He's a big-time rebounder, and he's a terrific playmaker. Um, but the thing about DeMarcus Cousins is that I just I can't help but think that in his days on the Sacramento Kings, he was helped out a lot by the fact that you could really just give him the ball every every possession and he'd just do something for you. Um, I didn't really, I, I don't really buy it that much into these amazing numbers because like a guy like Eric Bledsoe or maybe even Cat, um, you know, he's going to have so many touches. And, and I, I, I think I wouldn't say this as much for Cat because he's got guys on his team that are going to take a lot of shots. Wiggins takes a lot of shots. Levine took a lot of shots when he was healthy. Demarcus Cousins, he had all the shots he wanted. I mean, and he's, he's not very efficient he hasn't really fit in that well uh since coming to new orleans that's for sure that probably will work out in the end um but you know he just hasn't been all that great so far um but dmc is still an incredible talent i'm just you know who would i pick on my team well that's where we get into number two which is john wall washington wizards point guard now before you guys crucify me in the comments section about how Oh, you gotta have Boogie Cousins over John Wall. I'm gonna provide a case why I think John Wall's better than Boogie Cousins. I just think when you look at these guys' situations, you could go either way on this, obviously. You could say, oh, well, DeMarcus Cousins had no team, and that, that Sacramento Kings team was on the verge of the Western Conference playoffs. Um, you take a look at John Wall and what he does for his squad. 23 points a night, 11 assists, 4 rebounds. He's one of the top defenders at his position, so he plays both ends. He gets two steals. Um... The fact that this guy, you know, his he doesn't have a very consistent jumper. I mean, his mid-range game is coming together. His three-point game still isn't really there. He's still able to put up 23 a night and do it on pretty efficient field goal percentages. 11 assists a night. That's incredible. This guy is so good. So underrated as a playmaker. He can set up shooters better like on the fast break if you have John Wall running a fast break and shooters running with him you can't stop him I mean you he's either you're really gonna give up a layup or a three it seems like he's so good at that there's some things that he is just incredible at um John Wall doesn't really have besides that three-point shot any weaknesses to me and his and the best of all is that he's a leader he leads he's leading his team to that third seed in the Eastern Conference could end up even higher you know around the second seed um the Wizards could be, which would be incredible for him. His, you know, he, he he's accomplishing so much. I think that he's on the verge of being a top 10 player in the NBA. DeMarcus Cousins, to me, I, I, I need to see him fit on the Pelicans, man. I, these, this week, these few weeks, it, it, it's been a little bit cause of concern to what DeMarcus Cousins really is. And I know it's like, you got to get used to it. You got to get used to the new situation. Um, but I'm not sure how valuable is he going to be on a team that could actually win a championship. De John Wall He's he's displaying that he can be a leader on a championship team. That's so valuable. That's why he's here is because he's so all around. He knows how to make his guys better. He has such good leadership tactics. I haven't seen that with DeMarcus Cousins. And I and DMC is super talented also. And he's one of the best. He's the skill, most skilled big man in the game, I would say, probably. Um, but I just, I can't. I can't see him being more valuable to a team than a guy like John Wall. How have the Pelicans, how are they 2-0 and in blowout? Like, they've, they, they've gotten two huge wins. They beat Houston, and they got a blowout win over Detroit without DeMarcus. They're 2-0 and without him. I mean, that's in... Wait, yeah, 2-0. and I, I don't get that. Um, and Yeah, again, small sample size. I can't penalize him that much, but, you know, I'm taking John Wall for what he's done this season. He deserves respect. He's, he's been slept on too much. He does so much for his squad. He's working his way into that top 10 list. Um, I think he's there. Honestly, I, I do. I'd put him. I, I say he's a top 10 player. He's so good. He had 20 assists in a game a few, few nights ago. Come on, man. Who, who else is doing that? Who else can do that in the NBA? Like maybe Westbrook and Chris Paul. Nobody else, though. He's in a, he's in a league with a few guys. Or James Harden, of course. Um, but he's one of the best players in the league. And he, he has to be recognized as that DeMarcus Cousins. We haven't seen him even make the playoffs. Again, it's not his fault. 
because he doesn't have a good team built around him but can he win if he has a good team around him could he could he do it we don't know that um and that's why you know john wall i mean he's done it he's been in the playoffs he's been in the second round of the playoffs he's got injured and he probably would have gotten farther than that anyway we spent way too long on this one uh number one we got anthony davis this is pretty pretty like everybody knows anthony davis is the best kentucky player i mean this guy he set the blocks record at in college as a freshman. Um, he's in the NBA averaging 28 points, 12 rebounds, and two blocks a game. This guy is like, he came in as a guy that was like, oh, he's going to be a huge defensive force, and he's putting up 28 a night. This guy's stupid talented. Like, it's unbelievable. He's got everything in the bag. He's 6'11", athletic. He can shoot the mid-range. He's one of the best mid-range shooters in the game. Um, he can spread up to the three even at times. And he's an incredible defensive player. And the fact that he doesn't have a very good defensive... I mean, like, this team, believe it or not, they're 8th in defense. I think something like that. Um, Before DeMarcus Cousins, they were 8th in defense. That's incredible. I mean, how many defenders do you really have on that team besides AD? Um, He's holding down the paint. He's been fantastic at that. Um, But offense and defense, I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to right here. Anthony Davis is just so much, so far ahead of the curve. He's the best big man in the game. No question about it. Um, he came out of Kentucky. So yeah, this, this, uh, not a lot, not much really to say about Anthony Davis, honestly. Like, we all know, we all know about Anthony Davis. Um, this just proves the point. Like, Kentucky, you make a starting lineup with these guys, a starting lineup of Bledsoe, Wall, Davis, Cousins, Towns. I mean, that, guys, these guys are crazy good. Crazy good NBA prospects from Kentucky. Not only prospects, but guys that live up to the hype. Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns and John Wall, they're all number one picks. Um, and they've all lived up the hype. They're all respectively, I'd say, top 20 in the game. Cat, I would, yeah, I would say he's top 20 probably. Um, yeah, definitely top 20, Cat. Um, AD and Wall, I'd say they're top 10. You know, these guys live up to the hype. Cousins, I'd say he's, he's probably on the verge of being top 10, 15 or something like that. Uh, not not like 15th, but like he's around 10th, 11th, I would say. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and down below. Subscribe if you're new, and I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.